Okay, this is a Range Rover TD6 from 2003. It's uh, just short of three litres uh, diesel, and it's been stripped down at the moment due to a turbo problem, uh, a whistling that was coming from the turbo, which uh, proved out to be a, a blocked actuator. It was uh, covered in carbon. Whilst the turbo has been away, it's also had the bearings replaced. So just taking the opportunity to show you around the engine uh, as you don't very often get to see them in this state and uh, hopefully you won't get to see one in this state but if you do it might save you a couple of thousand pounds if you just follow some of the simple repair procedures that uh, I'll be undertaking and uh, halfway through undertaking today. Okay so at the moment you're looking at the overhead cams and timing chain at the front the uh, common rail there for the diesel. Uh, also here we've got the EGR valve. I've taken the opportunity to clean that out, uh, albeit it's not totally clear. It's considerably cleaner than it was before. Considerable build-up of carbon and um, muck basically in there that's been cleaned out. So whilst you've got that stripped down and uh, take that opportunity couple of cables there from the front of the engine carefully unclipped now, side of the engine the uh, dipstick tube bolts onto the side of the uh, inlet manifold casing um, so that needed to be removed and at the back there's a couple of more leads here again um, that you'll need to carefully remove just make sure that you, you unclip those and the bolt here holds the harness before you uh, force anything when you're pulling it down. Just at the back here you can see tucked away the injector cable, injector harness. Um, that's uh, been put to one side, just give you an idea of what the various parts are. You'll also notice uh, if you look in a typical Range Rover 2003 spec to 2005, 2006 the, uh, the area here is much more open than you'd typically find and uh, that's because the bolts, the nuts here have been removed and also here and then that allows you to pull out all of the assembly that's got the uh, pollen filter and ducting for the front uh, heaters and vents so by removing that it gives you a lot more space I've also uh, disconnected the main power cable that goes to the starter solenoid from the battery uh, because that was required to gain access to the the ducting and to remove that. Uh, it hasn't been necessary to disconnect the battery uh, on this occasion because there shouldn't be any live feeds to the engine whilst its ignition not off. Quickly we've got the inlet ports here into the cylinder block. Uh, Let's take the uh, air into the uh, engine for the combustion. Pressurised air from the turbo and hence there's some muck again in there uh, as you can see. Glow plugs, you won't normally be seeing those so a quick opportunity to see the glow plugs uh, sticking out at the top there. Uh, again normally this is all covered by the inlet manifold here, by the rock cover and airbox which are all one part thank you BMW um, uh, and, and require removal just to gain access to the turbo so as you can see down this side of the uh, engine bay hopefully if the light allows it uh, we've got the studs for the exhaust manifold a bracket here if you can see that the turbo actually fastens to with uh, one bolt that goes through there and then the exhaust uh, there, the front pipe for the exhaust. So you've got the two parts of the front pipe and also down here you've got the uh, oil drain uh, from the turbo going back into the sump. Uh, it's essential that the oil is flowing freely because that lubricates your bearing. Turbo spinning at an immense speed. EGR pipe work, that was a bit tricky to get undone these bolts here uh, but we just managed to get those off so it's worth persisting with. What I'm going to do is start reassembly and then talk you through the bits and bobs as I've done them. I'll just go through some of the other bits as well that I've bought uh, in the course of uh, these repairs that you may need to consider. Okay, so here's the turbo. As you can see, it's been uh, cleaned up. 
considerably. Uh, the uh, inlet side there that uh, has had the bearings replaced. The actuator here. This will control your boost pressure within the turbo itself. And this was actually what was the problem with mine. It was seized up and wasn't operating properly, partly due to carbon buildup within the unit uh, and possibly due to the linkages as well. Okay, this particular unit I've had reconditioned by a company called Turbo Techniques. They're based in Nottingham and it can be found on the internet. Um, it is a Garrett turbo, believed to be the standard uh, Land Rover fitment. I certainly haven't had cause to change it and none of the documents that came with the car and its service history suggest it's been changed. If you buy a new turbo currently, uh, 2010 prices as I'm recording this, Land Rover will set you back £1400. A Garrett turbo if you can find one, unbranded, uh, but from the Garrett make so it's not got the Land Rover oval on or it's not uh, coming a Land Rover wrapper, that'll cost you £700. The repairs on this occasion have come to £284 all in and that's including the courier fees uh, so it's just been delivered back to me today so quite competitive but you may find you've got somebody closer to home that can do the repairs for you I've had them do some repairs for me in the past on a previous Range Rover Classic that I owned and uh, they were honest enough to ring me and tell me that actually there was nothing wrong with the turbo I'd sent to them okay what else have I got see they bought a syringe that's usually used for child medication administration uh, or administering child medication should we say uh, for little babies uh, that the purpose of that is so that I can prime the oil uh, once I've fitted the turbo certainly make sure the bearings are suitably lubricated and top up the pipes uh, that run to the oil feed to the turbo uh, because the last thing I want to do is uh, overheat the bearing in the first few seconds of running before the the, uh, the pipe gets uh, up to pressure. I'm happy that the rest of the engine, because it's not a new build or a rebuild, is uh, all primed up so we haven't got to worry about that on this occasion. Okay, uh, there's uh, in that packet some banjo bolts, washers, uh, I lost one of the washers when I was disassembling, um, if you don't put those in then it's going to leak oil everywhere, that was a, a a steep learning curve from the previous uh, repair that I did on an old Land Rover and in here we've got the pipe work that went with the turbo down to the repair shop so that's got to be refitted shortly rubber gloves as you'll see I'm wearing um, oil's carcinogenic and the muck that's on the engine is carcinogenic so it's important not only for cleanliness but to uh, uh, your own health get some rubber gloves not very expensive it's worth it Okay, some studs. These studs are for the exhaust manifold. When I've removed the exhaust manifold, the studs and nuts were seized together for certainly three of the uh, studs, and the studs came out of the block. It's actually preferable because the other option is usually that they snap on you, and then you end up having all sorts of trouble getting the studs drilled out or removed. So, a new set of studs there. I'll probably only end up using three but hopefully if I ever need to do this repair in the future it'll help me out and uh, there they are, that, that's those and also the uh, copper nuts that are used uh, on the exhaust manifold I've bought a set of them, a full set of 12 uh, the nuts are a one shot use uh, typically they will be slightly oval when you look at them that's to uh, give them some extra grip uh, these look relatively round on this occasion but again so as not to uh, risk the nuts coming loose uh, and or being over torqued uh, bought new uh, and again it could help us out in the future with actually removing so uh, not a massive expense but again worthwhile doing so that's the the parts that I've had to buy and that's the sum total of the parts other than the reconditioning of the unit um, so at the moment £280 for the turbo, £20 worth of bits because they've come from Land Rover Direct and uh, £3 worth of rubber gloves, hopefully we won't be using all of those.